So we have this curve, and I've purposely given you a graph of it because it will be important later in the problem to kind of also analyze the graph. Um, so consider the curve described by this equation, x squared plus y squared, whole thing squared equals 25 over 3, x squared minus y squared, OK? Um, and now I want to find a few things. So I want to find dy dx, right? Then I want to find a certain tangent line. I want to find the tangent line at 2, 1. So I'm going to need part A for that. Now, part C and D are kind of independent of each other, although you still do need the derivative. So part C asks us to find points on the curve where the tangent line is vertical. We can already see from the diagram that we should end up getting two such points, right? This leftmost point and this rightmost point have vertical tangents. And there are no other points on the curve that have vertical tangent lines. So hopefully our analysis gives us those two such points. Um, and then part D, there is a point on the curve of the form 1.99a with a greater than zero. Okay, so that's like some point, you know, over here, like this pink point over here, 1.99 comma some y value. I don't know what the y value is. Um, however, we're going to use linear approximation to estimate the value of that y coordinate of the pink point. Okay. So let's get started. So also, if you are interested, sometimes these curves have special names. Um, so this type of curve, um, why is this a special curve? Like, what's so special about it? It's because it can actually be expressed um, in polar coordinates. This is something you do in calculus too, as like r squared equals like cosine of 2 theta or something. Um, and so that actually comes up in some applications. And this is actually called a lemnus gate. And it really comes from Latin, meaning ribboned. Just a little fun fact. OK, so. So I'm going to do part A and B, um, and then I'm going to give you some time to work on part C and D yourself, and then we'll go over it. So part A. So this is part A and B, very straightforward implicit differentiation, right? You're given an equation of the curve. You want to find dy dx, and you want to find it a tangent line. So very straightforward, implicit. You're used to these types of equations, or used to these types of uh, questions, rather. So let me write out. Um, so use implicit differentiation. Okay, so as so work on this, um, you know, you scribble the work as we're talking, and who wants to give us the derivative of the left hand side? And then as people type and we write that out, also for yourself. Try to scribble the answer to the derivative of the right hand side. So as soon as you get something, let's let's get some volunteers. Remember, it's a race. Whoever gets it first gets bonus points on their exam. Are Not you true. joking or are you serious? I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay. Hopefully you all know my sense of humor by now. Of course I'm joking. Not that it's not fair to those who are slower. I ain't just I just ain't giving you extra credit. This is how it goes. Okay, so Verda has an answer. So two x squared y x squared plus y squared. Good. Um, and that. Now, from chain rule, I get 2x plus 2y dy dx. Now, to save a little bit of room, because I don't have so much room on the screen, I'm going to write y prime instead of dy dx. So that is completely correct. Um, one common mistake, I saw this in the other lecture, um, some students actually forgot that set of parentheses. So make sure when you're using chain rule, the inside derivative actually multiplies the whole thing, the whole entire derivative. So you definitely do need that set of parentheses, or else you're wrong. OK, so hopefully you've also done the right-hand side. So it wants to give us the right-hand side of this uh, equation after I've differentiated. I don't want to give the right side, but I just have a question. Sure. So for the 25 over 3, can we leave that like just outside as a constant? That's right. So I would leave it as 25 over 3 and then focus on just differentiating the x squared minus y squared because the 25 over 3 is a coefficient. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. OK, 
Okay, so Verna has the 25 over 3 as set as a coefficient. Good. And then 2x minus 2y, y prime. Okay, good. So we're done with the essential calculus of the problem, right? We've differentiated both sides of the equation. Now what we need to do, we need to solve for y prime. Notice that in a lot of problems we've been doing recently, I've actually said substitute the point now and then solve for y prime. However, in this particular problem for part A, it actually did ask you to find dy dx in general. So yes, I can do that strategy of substituting the point for part B, but since I need dy dx anyway, I may as well do all the algebra, right? I have to anyway for part A. So now we have to do algebra. Because I thought we've done the pro uh, problem, we've avoided algebra for so long, and some of you kind of struggle with that, I'd rather do the algebra at least for one problem. Okay, so starting from this equation, keep in mind, what are we solving for? We're solving for y prime, which appears in two places. So I have to somehow isolate that. So first of all, I'm going to cancel out a factor of two on both sides, right, just to make my life a little bit easier. And then at the same time, I'm going to multiply both sides by three. So if I multiply both sides by three, I get six on the left, and the three on the uh, right. So the twos cancel and I get six and 25 on the left and right um, respectively. Okay. So six X squared plus Y squared X plus Y Y prime equals 25 uh, X minus Y Y prime. So, so far we've just juggled around some coefficients and canceled out some numbers to make our lives easier. Now I need to solve for y prime. So I do need to expand both sides. So on the right side, I expand and I get 25x minus 25y, y prime, right? Pretty simple. On the left-hand side, though, let's be careful. Don't do more work than you really have to. And what I mean by that is I only really need to separate the y prime from everything, right? I just need terms with y prime separated from terms without y prime. So you might be tempted to actually multiply this whole entire expression out. You know, you, you should probably call it foiling, right? Which means I'm going to get x squared distributed and the y squared distributed. I would actually end up getting four terms on the left-hand side. But there's no reason for that, right? Because two of those terms are actually going to include the y prime already. So to save ourselves a little bit of work, we're actually going to treat the six x squared plus y squared as one term, right? Because that term does not have y prime in it. So just that single term gets distributed to the x and then to the y, y prime. So I'm gonna write something like this. Six x squared plus y squared x plus six x squared plus y squared, move this over a little bit, y, y prime. So notice how now the y primes are separated from the non-y primes, right? I have y prime on this term, but y prime not on the other term, right? There's no Can reason. Can you explain that again? Excuse me, say that again? Can you explain that again? I got a little lost. Okay, I'm treating this brown highlighted term, the 6x squared plus y squared, as just one term. So I'm distributing that to each of the x and y, y prime. How you would maybe normally be tempted to do this is to actually then say, okay, now let me distribute the x squared and the y squared to get, say, x cubed plus x, y squared, then distribute this and this, you know, it's a six, and then distribute this to get x squared, y, y prime plus y squared, y, y prime. So you might be tempted to expand this as four separate terms, but why do that? Just, I only need the y primes separated from the non-y primes, and I'm solving for y prime, I'm not solving for anything else. So just keep y primes away from non-y primes. So instead of getting four terms for the expansion, I actually only get two terms. All right, I just get this and this. But like, what's this little x outside of the x squared plus y squared? Talk about this x that I just circled? Yes. Well, that comes from the first ex uh, expansion, right? When I multiply this x into that term. All right, so continuing now, now let's get all the y primes on one side and solve for y prime. So I have y prime on the left and the right-hand side right now. 
Okay, so I'm actually going to move all the y primes over to the right side and the non y primes over to the left side. So I get here 6x squared plus y squared x minus 25x equals negative 25y y prime minus 6x squared plus y squared y y prime. Okay. I'm actually going to multiply it by the negative 1 because I don't like both terms having a negative. So 25x minus 6x squared plus y squared x. So the right-hand side now just has positive terms. And at the same time, I can now also factor out the y prime on the right-hand side. I just want to keep highlighting those y primes just so you can see them. Okay, now this is very good because now I have two terms, right? I have one big term on the left and one big coefficient on the right, and I can solve for y prime. So solving for y prime gives me left side divided by right side. So that would be my final answer for dy dx. Again, if you had some trouble with the algebra at any step, um, I strongly suggest maybe looking at the video later or just doing the algebra yourself later. Um, and if you still have questions, ask me. I mean, if you do have some questions, um, what do I do with the negative sign? So in this line, going from the one line, going from this line transition that I've just marked, I've actually multiplied both sides by negative one. So this becomes a plus, this becomes a plus. But then that means the left-hand side kind of switches order, right? When you have, say, a minus b, and you multiply it by negative 1, now you get b minus a, right? You get the opposite order. The only reason I did that was really pure aesthetics. I don't like having two minus signs. I like having both of them plus. But it doesn't really matter. You could have kept the minus signs. Um, I thought I saw Jack um, typing a question. Jack, did you still have a question? Maybe, maybe I already answered it. Okay. Now let's do part B, which is a tangent line question. All right, so now we have dy dx. Now we're going to use that for the rest of the problem. It's now off the screen. I'm just going to remind us what was the problem statement. Okay, now this should be very straightforward, right? Once you have dy dx, it should be very straightforward. Um, I will also say, if you didn't trust your algebra, let's say, you know, I'm I'm not sure if I got the right answer. I, you know, I'm not that great with algebra. I maybe messed up. You could actually do this tangent line. Notice, let's go all the way back to this box equation near the top of the screen in black. That was the first equation I got after I did the derivative. So instead of solving for y prime and doing all this, I could have also, if I only wanted the tangent line, I could have substituted right here x equals 2, y equals 1 to get the slope of the tangent line. And that would have made that algebra a lot easier, right? Because this x squared plus y squared is now just 5, right? You just have numbers everywhere. So if you don't trust your algebra for part A, you can still get the correct answer for part B if you go back and substitute. Now, I'm not going to do that because I do trust my algebra. I do know that I have the correct answer here, so I'm just going to rely on this. So, for the slope of the tangent line, is, let's see. So all I do is substitute in, um, so I do y prime evaluated at x equals 2 and y equals 1. So I substitute those two numbers into this boxed expression at the top of the screen, and we should get, let's see, 50 minus uh, 6 times 5 times 2 um, over 25 plus 6 times 5 times 1. And if you work out this arithmetic, you should get negative 2 over 11. Check my notes. Oh, uh, yeah, so you get negative 2 over 11 for the slope. So then the tangent line...
is y equals the point was 2 1 so 1 minus 2 over 11 times x minus 2 point slope form okay so that should have been if you did part a part b should be kind of a very straightforward just like an extra you know like 20 seconds right we we know how to find uh, tangent lines but any questions so far angelica Sorry, is it okay if we write it the other way, like the y minus one? Blah, you can write blah, it however blah. you want, as long as the equation is correct. Okay. I'm going to write it this way because later on I will want it in that form anyway. We'll see with it, another part of the problem, but whatever you want. Um, Jonathan, I guess, had the uh, the same question. Yeah, any form you want. 